welcome to today's session in physics today we are discussing some problems first example 57 determine the maximum acceleration of the train in which a box lying on its floor will remain stationary given that the coefficient of static friction between the box and the train's floor is 0 0.15 so in this question, the box is inside a train which is in an accelerated motion. And we are asked to find that maximum acceleration for which the box will be stationary inside the train. So when the box is inside the train and train is in accelerated motion, the required acceleration for the box is provided by the force of friction between the box and the floor of the train. So it is that static friction which provides the required force to get, give that much acceleration for the box. If the box is having the same acceleration as that of the train then only the box will be stationary inside the train if its acceleration is other than the acceleration of the train the box will not be stationary inside the train so the force of static friction should be able to provide that much acceleration of that of train so our condition becomes this that means if the acceleration is a the required force as per Newton's second law of motion, we know it is m into a. That m a is provided by this maximum static friction. That means static friction provides the force, but the maximum value of that static friction is fms. So, the thing is this maximum acceleration, the acceleration can be maximum so that that force is provided by the maximum static friction so our condition becomes m a max is equal to maximum static friction where a max is the maximum acceleration so maximum static friction we know mu s into n where n is the normal reaction so from that we can calculate a max because n in this case it is equal to m g so m and m will get cancelled and we'll get a max to be equal to mu s into g so putting g as 10 we get a max as 1.5 meter per second square so the point which you have to keep in mind in solving this type of problem is this uh, when we say the box is stationary inside an accelerated train, it means that the box is having the same acceleration as that of the train. So, some force should be there to provide that much acceleration. Here, static friction provides that required force. Now, coming to next question. That is question 5.8. See figure 5.11. A mass of 4 kg rests on a horizontal plane. The plane is gradually inclined until at an angle theta equal to 15 degree with the horizontal. The mass just begins to slide. What is the coefficient of static friction between the block and the surface? So this case actually we have discussed the, the under the discussion of angle of repose. So here it's given the mass just begins to slide at that case the angle theta equal to 15 degree. So here 15 degree is the angle of repose. So directly we can find but in the textbook it is solved by taking the equations which we have already taken in the discussion of angle of repose. So if it is a one mark question you can directly answer that question by finding tan 15 because that relation is that mu s is equal to tan theta where theta is the angle of repose. So knowing the value of theta as 15 degree you can directly find. Otherwise, we have to do as we did the case with the derivation with ang angle of repose. Okay, 
so here as the figure suggests there are two forces acting in the vertical direction that means mg is acting downwards and normal reaction is acting normal to the inclined plane and along the inclined plane there are two forces uh, static friction is acting opposite to the direction of mg sin theta here mg cos theta and mg sin theta are the components of mg okay so here we have two equations n is equal to mg cos theta and fs max maximum static friction equal to mg sin theta okay so from that solving dividing the two equations we get fs max is equal to mu s into n then substituting the values we have mu s is equal to tan 15 that is 0 0.27 so that is the answer to that question. So the same steps as we solved for angle of repose. Now coming to example 5.9. What is the acceleration of the block and trolley system shown in figure 5.12a? So this diagram is 5.12a. If the coefficient of kinetic friction between the trolley and the surface is 0 0.04. What is the tension in the string? take g to be 10 meter per second square and neglect the mass of the string so we are asked to find the tension in the string and we are also asked to find the acceleration of the system so here one uh, object is under motion along the surface and the friction arises there and the other object is hung through a pulley okay so first of all we need to discuss the forces acting on these two objects first let's consider this hanged one okay the forces which are acting on that object it is 30 newton that means its weight which is acting vertically down and tension is acting vertically up along the string towards the point of suspension so here this point comes as the point of suspension so that is the direction of tension okay then it is having an acceleration a and that is downwards so net to force is in this direction so net to force is in downward direction and the acceleration suppose we assume it to be a so we can write to the uh, force equation as 30 newton minus tension so that is the net to force that is equal to m into a so that is the first equation which we get from this hanged object now coming to this object in the case of that 20 kilogram object the two forces acting on the object are tension towards the point of suspension and the kinetic friction which opposes that movement of that trolley in the opposite direction of course its weight is acting downward but in vertical direction the body is in equilibrium so we need not speak about that case because we are asked to find the things which are in the horizontal direction so the weight of the body and the normal reaction here we need not consider we consider only the forces which are acting in horizontal direction which are tension and force of kinetic friction so here this weight um, that means this trolley also will be having the same acceleration as we took a so a is that common acceleration for the system so trolley of 20 kilogram also is having an acceleration a so in this direction is the acceleration so our expression becomes tension t minus f k is equal to m into a here m is 20 kilogram so 20 into a so here special case is to be taken because the two masses are different here the mass is in this case the mass is 3 kilogram and in this case the mass is 20 kilogram so when we write m a that m are different for the two masses let's see the force uh, what diagrams which which we call as free body diagram and the equations so for the hanged object this is the free body diagram uh, t and 30 newton so as i said 30 minus t is equal to 3a because its mass is 3 that is the first equation and in the second case it becomes 
t minus f k equal to 28 because here the mass is 20 kilogram okay and what is f k that's what we need to substitute next you know f k is equal to mu k into n where mu k is 0 0.04 that is given in the question and n you know 20 into 10 that is 200 newton here are in the question it's given g is equal to 10 meter per second square so substituting in the above equation this equation will have t minus 0 0.04 into 200 is equal to 20 into a or t minus 8 is equal to 20 a so we have two equations in tension and acceleration we can solve the two equations as we learnt in 10th standard you know how to solve two linear equations so you just solve the two equations and you will get acceleration to be 22 by 23 meter per second square and tension to be 27.1 newton now one question from exercises question 5 3 give the magnitude and direction of the net force acting on a stone of mass 0.1 kilogram four cases are given just after it is dropped from the window of a stationary train just after it is dropped from the window of a train running at constant velocity of 36 km per hour just after it is dropped from the window of a train accelerating with 1 meter per second square and fourth case lying on the floor of a train which is accelerating with 1 meter per second square the stone being at rest relative to the train neglect the air resistance throughout so here we are asked to find the magnitude and direction of the net force acting so first of all it is dropped from the window of a stationary train so when it is dropped from the window the acceleration acting on the stone is only the acceleration due to gravity so the force acting on the stone is m into g that is 0 0.1 into 10 that is 1 newton now in the second case it is dropped from the window of a train running at constant velocity since velocity is constant there also the acceleration is zero so that since the acceleration is zero that means in the horizontal direction but in vertical direction it has the acceleration which is equal to the acceleration due to gravity and hence it's uh, the force acting on the object is vertically downward in horizontal direction there is no force in vertical direction the force is equal to the weight of the object and that is given by m into g uh, so we again the answer is one newton now the third question it's little bit confusing it's given that the stone is dropped from a train which is accelerating at one meter per second square so the thing is this the stone is dropped and the train is moving in horizontal direction here what point you have to keep in mind is this once if the stone is dropped it has come out of the train okay that moment onwards the only force acting on the stone is the gravitational force which is its weight so only that force is acting this m into a so naturally we will have the a tendency to find out the force which provides that acceleration 1 meter per second square we will have the tendency but here it is misleading actually here that force is required in the horizontal direction but only when the stone is inside the train if the stone has come out of the vehicle means it the no more that force is needed so the only force uh, which acts on the stone is only the gravitational force so here also the answer is one newton so that force f equal to m a need not be found here now coming to the fourth case the train is moving with an acceleration one meter per second square and inside that train 
the stone is at rest. So, the net force acting on the stone is in the direction of motion of the train. Of course, its weight is acting downwards, but normal reaction from the floor of the train balances that weight of the stone. And the only force which is acting, that means the net force acting on the stone will be in the direction of motion of the train. And that is given by F is equal to MA, that is 1 into point. 1 that is 0 0.1 Newton. So that is the answer in the direction of motion of the train. Now question 5.5. 5. A constant retarding force 50 Newton is applied to a body of mass 20 kilogram moving initially with a speed 15 meter per second. How long does the body take to stop? So here force is given retarding force it is retarding force means its speed decreases so retarding force is acting in a direction opposite to the direction of motion so that sign we can take to be negative that is the importance of that word retarding force we have to take the sign to be negative then mass is given and from that data you can actually calculate the acceleration of the object using Newton's second law that is F is equal to MA. So, we will get acceleration to be minus 2.5 meter per second square. Knowing the acceleration we can calculate. So, in this question we are asked to find uh, how long does the body take to stop. So, it is under the action of retarding force. So, finally it is coming to rest means final velocity is 0. Then when this constant retarding force started acting, its velocity is 15 meter per second. So that 15 meter per second is initial velocity. You can write it as either V0 or U. So using that first equation of motion itself, you can find out the time taken by the body to stop. Okay, because acceleration we already found. So by substituting in first equation of motion, we will get the answer to be 6 seconds. So, you can uh, substitute that equation that uh, V equal to U plus AT or as we studied V is equal to V0 plus AT. In any of the two equations you can substitute it. Now coming to question 5-6. A constant force acting on a body of mass 3 kilogram changes its speed from 2 meter per second to 3.5 meter per second in 25 second. The direction of motion of the body remains unchanged. What is the magnitude and direction of the force? Here mass of the body is 3 kilogram and initial speed and final speed and time taken for that change is given. So from that data what we can calculate is its acceleration. Acceleration is equal to V minus V0 by T. So using that equation we can calculate that acceleration. Okay, so we will get the acceleration to be 3.5 minus 2 by 25 that is 0 0.06 meter per second square. And using Newton's second law of motion we get the force as M into A that is 3 into 0 0.06 that is 0 0.18 Newton. And what about the direction of action of the force? Here it is given the force do not change the direction of the body. That means the net force acting on the body is in the direction of the motion of the body. Now coming to 5.7, question 5.7. A body of mass 5 kilogram is acted upon by two perpendicular forces 8 Newton and 6 Newton. Give the magnitude and direction of the acceleration of the body. So here we have to use some concepts which we studied in previous chapter. Uh, when two vectors are acting at a point, what is the resultant? So resultant force here we have to find first because the body of mass 5 kilogram is acted upon by two perpendicular forces 8 Newton and 6 Newton. So here the advantage is this the forces are perpendicular to each other that means the angle between the two forces is uh, what um, that 90 degree as shown here that is the angle between the two forces. So using that parallelogram law we have root of 
uh, what 8 square plus 6 square uh, then the next term will be equal to 0 because cos 90 will come as 0. So, the resultant of the two forces will be root of 8 square plus minus 6 square that is root 64 plus 36 that is 10 Newton. Now, we can find the angle made by that um, resultant. So, we have tan inverse a y by a x no. So, minus 6 by 8. So, we have minus 36.87 degree. That negative sign indicates that theta is in the clockwise direction with respect to the force of magnitude 8 Newton. I have already told you usually positive angle means the angle measured in anti-clockwise direction. So, here we got that angle to be negative. It means that that angle is referred in uh, what clockwise direction. Now, as per Newton's second law of motion, the acceleration of the body is given by F is equal to m a or a is equal to F by m that is 2 meter per second square. So, with that we conclude today's session. Thank you.